All right. Uh, hello, everyone, again. Uh, uh, this is me again. And in this video, I'm going to expand more on about, uh, uh, on object orientation. And just review what we did uh, yesterday in the, other, in the previous video, and then uh, and implement what we call inheritance in object oriented. All right. So this is what we did yesterday. We created an account this account called uh, a class called bank account it has some attributes it has a constructor or an initializer it has an overloaded initializer overloaded uh, overloading is a terminology in object oriented means that you can have multiple faces or the polyformism sometimes it's called uh, you have multiple faces of the same function okay so you have an init here and a net here the difference between the two one receive multiple parameters one does not receive parameter okay but uh, this is what we call overloading a method okay all right and we have a few functions withdraw deposit and print details and then we were able to create different objects calling the initializer one time we calling the the default initializer or constructor where we don't pass any value and then we set the property accordingly to the value that we want the other way you can and then we called a few methods like deposit withdraw and uh, withdraw twice because this, there was some logic here that if you if you try to do withdraw more than what you have that's what you get you get an error message now the second way we can create an object is that we call the other overloaded method which is the, uh, the initializer which is uh, uh, the one that receives parameter all right so that's what we did in the previous video in this video we're going to create a special type of account and we're going to call we're going to cover inheritance okay what are we doing with inheritance uh, what we're doing is that we're going to cover um, we usually you have like what we call general case and specific case in this case we have a bank account but you could have multiple different type of bank, bank accounts you can have saving checking uh, CD uh, what do you call it um, investment account each one has its own rules and then maybe have additional uh, attributes and methods for example, we're going to create one. We're going to call this uh, CD account. CD means like a deposit account. And what we want to do here, we're going to say this account is actually a bank account. So it inherits from the parent class. Now, automatically, the parent class has the following attributes. It has these attributes. So these will be available in the child okay the, the uh, cd account also we have some functions such as the uh, print details the deposit the uh, withdrawal also these are available in the other account now you can of course implement your own uh, methods inside of it but let's start with the easy way the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to define our own attribute additional attribute that pertain only to this account such as we're going to have rate and this rate is double and then we're going to have lock period which is the investment period okay so i'm going to call it period which is an integer and this is the period is the number of months that you want okay all right so that take care of the attribute now we got an error because you need an initializer say so wait a minute you don't have an initializer yet so what we're going to do, we're going to create the default initializer first. We're going to say init. And then notice when I type init, I get actually two inits. One from, the, those are coming from the parent class. So this and this. So which one I'm going to override? I'm going to override the default one. So I'm going to do that and type in some code. Now we got some an error, right? And the, the reason you got an error says, wait a minute, you have an init method in here and an init method in there. What do you want to do? Do you want to override the init method in the parent class? Yes. So we need to step in, override the init method in the parent class. Okay. Now we need to do some initializing source variables. Okay. All right. So one thing we need to do, we need to say rate, 
we make it equal to zero, period equal to zero, and I need to tell the parent class, yes, I've done my part, now you need to do your part. And his part, or the class part, is that you need to initialize a few things as his own. The things like this, the account number, and the, the account number, the balance, and the customer name. So how do we tell the parent to do something for us? We tell him we use a keyword called super. So you can say super, and then we call invoke the method in it for in the super. Okay, now we should be happy. So what, let me explain what we've done here. <clears throat> we have our own init method in this CD account. Uh, because this method exists in the parent class, we need to use a keyword called override. All right. This override allows me to create my own custom methods that are separate th uh, than the parents. In this init method, I initialize some of the values and I tell the parent also you need to do your part and initialize your attribute. Okay, so that is uh, how we usually do things. Okay, now we want to implement another method. Remember, there is another method which is what print uh, no init with some attributes. <clears throat> now I'm going to have my own init here. Now I'm going to change the number, the uh, attribute names here a little bit. You'll see why. I'm going to call this as balance, and, but instead of balance, we're going to call it amount, and I'm going to call this custom name. Okay. Now I'm going to also include two more parameters, such as the rate. Okay. And then I'm going to call this is double again, and I'm going to include also period, and it is. And again, all right. So here I need to do something here. I need to initialize some variables. But here, notice I'm not using an init. I'm not using the keyword override. And the reason I'm using the override because this init, the signature, is different than the init signature in here. A signature meaning what? It means it has the same names, same number of parameters, and everything. But this one here is different, so I don't need to do that. I don't need to use the uh, override keyword. All right, what do we do in here? We do the same thing that we did there. First, I do rate, self rate, equal to the rate that is being passed to us, which is this rate right here. Okay, then you do self Again, uh, a period equal to the period that is being passed to us. All right. Now we need to tell the parent, also, I want you to initialize your parameter or your attributes with the values that I've received. So how do we do this? We say super, again, dot init. Notice I have the second one, dot init with the account number. Now I pass to the super class. The, the attribute, the, the parameter I received here, so such as the account number, the amount to the balance, and then the customer to the customer name. So here I will, instead of that, I can say account number. And here I can say, instead of that, I can say amount. And here I would say, uh, what do we call that? Cust and cust and okay. Now it's happy. So what happens, let me explain to you what happens. We get those, when we call this initializer constructor, what you do is that you get these parameters into your method. Then I take some of the parameters belong to this class, such as the rate and the period. I assign them to the attributes that belong to this class. In addition to that, then I take some of the values that are being passed to us and send them to the parent class to do the initialization. And then you do the same, how you do it? You call the constructor of the parent class by doing so, all right? By passing the value to the parent, we, we invoke the, super method, uh, the init method in the super class, and we pass the parameters that are being passed to us, okay?
this is a kind of a difficult concept if you're new to object oriented uh, uh, object oriented way of thinking it is it is kind of difficult to comprehend the first time all right so you might have to review this a few times to get it to get around it the point behind it is that you have a parent class it will it has some things in it and you have a child class in the child class you have attributes that belong to it so these are my uh, attributes that belong to this class you have some method that you might override from the parent class meaning what you override it means that you want your own implementation of that method. So in this case, I have my own initializer. Okay, so I initialize the thing that I, belongs to me, and I tell the parent to do the same thing by calling a method that belongs to the parent. Same thing in here. I have an initializer, but this one is different than the one in the parent class because it has different signature, different number of parameters, different names. Okay, so this one, no need to override. But I do the same thing. There are things that belong to me and initialize them with the values that I've received and things that belong to the parents. So I tell the parents to do the same thing for me. One more thing. We have one more method that I'll show you. We have the uh, print details. Remember, we have print details that are available in the parent class. If I do this, if I wanted to implement it, notice I have override now. Because the print detail in the parent method prints only the values like the account number, the customer name, and the balance. What I want, I want to also do what? Include the rate and the period in that message. So I can do it an easy way. First, you can say, let us, let's say P details, parent details, so you understand, equal to super, that print details so that will give me that formatted message that we were seeing in the earlier video now what can i do with that i can make my own message concatenate them together and return that new message so for example if i say print if i say uh, uh, my details let my details equal uh, and as format Oops, what have we done here? Equal uh, and a string, and then we want to do format, and then I'm going to say, okay, my, the details that I have here are only the rate. So for a rate, you need to use that two decimal floating, okay? Uh, maybe three, because interest rate could make a difference. Uh, three decimal floating, and then you can say, uh, let's put something in it, says ray equal. And then we will put slash n here to put a, a line separator between the two. And then we say period equal. And then we say here, because it's decimal, we use uh, percent d. Then I pass the two values, which is, what are the two values? Self rate, dot rate, and then self dot period. And then I got two messages now, I, two strings. The first string is from the parent, the second string that I formatted that belongs to me. And then what do I do here? I just say let or return s or p details that comes from the details. Plus, I want to put a, a, a new line separator between them. So uh, they, they will print on the next line. And then I say plus my details okay so now i got the parent details and i made my own details i combined them together together and then this is the print details that belong to that bank account or the cd account all right we're almost over now we, how do we use this in new class we've just created we use it the same way you've used the other one you just create let uh, cd account equal and then here you just say cd account notice when i put this i have two ways to create the account we're going to use the second way so we don't have to set the attributes but you could have done it you could do it this way cd and then put the attribute 
uh, uh, set the attribute manually yourself. But no, we're gonna do it this way. One, 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 one for the account name, double amount, let's say 10,000. <coughs> name equal hala. And then rate equal uh, 0 0.035, let's say. And then here we have the period, uh, the period, let's say 24 months, okay. So if you type in CD, AC, I created this way. If I type in this, CD, AC, CD, what did I type? CD, capital CD, AC, dot. If I type in this, you'll see that I have all the attributes that belong to the parent class, and the I have the period, and then the rate, and I have the balance, and I have the customer, and the account number. These belong to the parent class, but yet they're available in my class, all right? All right, what else do I do? So if I say, uh, let's say print details, just to show you, uh, print line, uh, CD, CDAC dot print details. Now we're calling the print details from the parent, uh, the child class. So now, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the details here, you'll see that you have, in addition to this, you're also getting the rate and the period. All right. So that is. A difficult concept to comprehend, but we covered inheritance and how you do inheritance by uh, putting colon and then the class that you want to inherit from. Now you can define your own attributes. You can define your own, implement your own uh, uh, methods. If these methods exist in the parent class, then you have to use the word keyword override. Here we implemented a new initializer, and this one does not exist in the parent class, so that because it has different parameters, different signatures, then I don't need to do the override. We also have a method in 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 this one here. You can call the, a parent class uh, a method, or uh, uh, by simply using the keyword super, and you put the method name that you want to call or the function name that you want to call. You can also have uh, your own print details like we did, which is another method that exists in the parent class, but we, uh, we overloaded or we override that method by implementing our own uh, print details. And to call it, simply you call it the same way you called previous classes, okay? To the to the user or to the programmer, I don't care what happens here. All I know, I have, you know, we call this encapsulation. I have only, I have all I want. You want you to create a CD account. What happened in that CD account, I don't care whether it's a parent or a child, whatever it is. All I want is that this is the attribute that I'm going to give you and then give me some of the functions that are available in that class. That is the end of object oriented. Uh, inheritance, overloading, overriding, uh, some encapsulations. And uh, if you master these concepts at this level, that's all you need. You don't need more than that, okay, to understand Swift and then write some code in Xcode. Of course, you can elaborate and know more if you want, but for now, I think this is more than enough, okay? All right, in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, static. We call them static classes or uh, cl uh, static methods or static functions. Uh, in Swift, they're called class methods. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.